Okay, so today we're going to have a go at drawing um, this polo shirt. We're going to use it as a template to trace around the outside of it so that we will be able to um, get a realistic um, a realistic polo shirt. So what we're going to actually start off with is we've got our photograph. As I said before when you use photographs, it's really important to understand construction details and to realise that obviously when this photo was taken, they were not really considering that we were going to be tracing over it. So when it gets to certain parts of this polo shirt, you will need to make sure that obviously where it gets to these bits where it's folded or there's a little crease, that we kind of consider what the garment should look like flat and we should also remember that there may be some parts i.e. the opening here that we will need to use our technical knowledge on. So as you can see this is quite a prominent photograph and if I was to use a black stroke colour it probably will be a little bit difficult to see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to dim this layer by clicking on the thumbnail in the layers box. If you don't see this dialog box all you need to do is go to Windows, Layers, or you can just do um, L, which will bring up the layers. So I'm going to um, double click on the thumbnail, have the option here to dim the image too, which basically is going to just make it a little bit more transparent. I like to do mine 70, it really does depend on the actual image itself. If it's quite dark, you may have to use bump that number a little bit higher. You can actually change the number by highlighting here. I'm going to select OK. And so now you can see it's a little bit more transparent. I'm going to lock this layer by just clicking on the box next to the eye. And then I'm going to go to the drop down arrow and I'm going to do new layer. I'm going to call this layer technical drawing. And I'm going to leave this. I'm not going to actually click the dim images too because I want to be able to see this. And I'm going to go OK. So the next thing I'm going to do is give myself a guideline. It's really good to give yourself a guideline, especially when you are doing technical drawing. What we would normally do is draw one half of the garment and reflect it. So to give you a bit more understanding of that, I am going to draw a guideline. Now when you have your... Um, let me just give this one right. Um, when you have your, when you open your Illustrator document, you should have these sort of um, rulers at the top. So you'll have a vertical one and a horizontal one. If you don't have that, all you need to do is press Command R or go to Windows Rulers or um, your Rulers, 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 Rulers View. Sorry, excuse me, and um, you should be able to say wrote Rulers there. So I'm going to get my black arrow tool, I'm going to drag my rulers from the side um, ruler and I'm going to go to the button and use it as a reference for the centre front. So when I let go, that guide will appear on the page. At the moment, um, I need to check whether my guides are locked and let's have a look. If I get my black arrow tool and try to move it, it doesn't move, it means it's locked. If you try to move it and yours does move, then you need to lock your guide. So if you go to view and you have the option guide, it will say lock guides. Now it's important to do that because when you go to join these parts here, or the open points, if your guide is not locked, it will not allow you to join it. Okay, so let's get drawing, making sure that I have a stroke color. I normally like my strokes, so if I click on here, to be two on the outline. So all the outlying sections I like to be two. Um, I like my plackets and stuff, and um, plackets and labels or anything inside the outline I like to be one. And stitching, I like to be 0 0.5. So let's start, get my stroke. I'm gonna start from the center front neckline. I'm gonna click hold the ALT key and drag outwards. This ensures that the front point or the first point will be 90 degrees. Now I can't see the neckline, so I'm gonna judge, roughly I know that the neckline is fairly scooped on the front than it is to the back. I'm gonna come across here, click again on the last point, go to the end of the shoulder. Now I need to click back on the last point, and this is purely because I want to start drawing a curve. At the moment, 
the pen thinks that I want to draw a straight line, so I need to click back on that point. If you watch again, I did a curve here. If I continue drawing, my pen will think I still want to do a curve line, so I need to click on the last point again and draw a straight line. Let's get our white pen tool and move this down a bit. So if I hold the shift key, I can make sure that that line is still straight. Let it go. And then I'm going to get my pen tool again, hover over the last point to reconnect, and complete that shape. Now it's important that all those points are connected, and we also just need to make sure that our front neck, oh, sorry, armhole is um, curved. Remember, the front armhole is always more curved than the back. So I'm just putting a bit more shaping in there. It's using the back, the um, photo as a reference. So the next thing we need to do is draw our sleeve. We always tackle our technical drawings using separate shapes. So we consider what the pattern cutting would be like. So when you're pattern cutting a polo shirt, you would have a sleeve that's done separately as a separate piece. You'd have a front panel, which is cut as a separate piece. You'd have the back, you'd have the collar, and you sometimes have a back net buggy for, or a back net facing for the um, label to be attached. So I'm gonna come across, get my pen tool again, and I'm going to um, start from the hem here. I'm gonna come across, I'm going to keep this line fairly straight, don't want to curve it too much. And then I'm going to come up again. And this time you can see I've kind of overlapped the front body on purpose. Now I'm going to show you why I do that. Let me just finish off here. Now the reason why I actually do this is because if I actually go too close to the outline here, it will try and join my sleeve to the body, and I don't want to do that. I still want to keep it as a separate shape. So after I finish drawing the sleeve, I can always get my white arrow tool and move it into the position that it should be. So you can see I can move it back. It should be aligned with the shoulder seam because when you're stitching your sleeve, that's what it would be connected to. So I'm just gonna, again, move that into the right place. And I'm going to take this down a bit because I don't want it to be too muscly. And I want it to be close to the template as possible while still considering the construction details. So now I've got one half, well, not, not nearly one half. I'm going to now draw on the collar. So get my pen tool again. I'm going to draw the collar as a separate shape, as I said before. Coming around, again, I'm not getting too close to here. I am going to go to the centre front because if I'm considering what a normal polo shirt would be made of, <coughs> the polo collar would actually finish at the centre front. So I'm coming back again. Now people often ask me, does this, this be, sorry, should this be straight or should it be curved? This part should be straight, but when you get to the outer edge, it should be curved. And it should be curved because when you're using a rib fabric, it tends to do that when it glides over the body. If it was woven, that would be slightly different. So I'm gonna hover over the last point. You may not be able to see, but on the cursor, there's a circle that's appeared. If I click, whoops, do that again, Command Z. If I click and drag, I can get that curved edge on the polo. So, you may get this little point here, don't worry too much, that's to do with your angle. If you just click and drag it downwards in the right place, and we can now move this closer to the front, or the line here. Perfect. Okay, so now we've got a collar. Now we're going to do the um, cuff. Do the cuff, I'm going to go a bit closer. I'm going to get my white pen, my, um, pen tool. I'm going to come again. I don't want to get too close 
to that line. I don't want to touch that line because I don't want my rib to join to the sleeve. So I'm going to start a little bit of a way off. Go back in. Again, straighten this off. I'm going to give this a little bit of curve. Some people like it straight. I think today we're going to slightly curve it. So it is rib. We're going to come back up and we're going to join it again. Oh, join it again here. Waiting for the circle. And then you can see I've kind of overlapped this again, just like what I did with the sleeve. You move this back into the right place, making sure it's nice and flush here. Just reshape my curve slightly by using the anchor arm and move that into the right place there. Okay, so you may be thinking, why have I done this? Basically, when we finish this um, sleeve, we are going to send it to the back, so you're not going to see all this extra overlap. It's just to make sure that we have a nice finish line. Sometimes what happens if you do it exactly to that line, you end up with a double line like this, and it can end up having gaps, which is not very nice. So I always say, go slightly over, and you can send that object to the back, and it will be a lot more nicer and um a much more tidier as well, much more sleek look. Okay, let's move this a tiny bit up. See how I'm taking a little bit more time to make sure that it's accurate. With these technical drawings, you really need to do, make sure that they are as accurate as possible. So now I've got my um, front done. I can um, add some stitching if I need to add some stitching. I'm gonna add some stitching to the armhole. It's good to add the stitching on this side before you reflect it because it saves you a lot of work in the long run. So I'm going to get my white arrow tool. I'm going to click on this curve here because this is the correct curve. Remember this section is not going to be seen. It's going to be sent to the back of the garment. So if I click with my white arrow tool here, making sure that these points are still white and they don't have a fill. If they have a red color or if they're filled in, that means that they have they've been selected. So I've just clicked on the line as you've seen. Command C, Command V means that I've copied that line alone. Now I can select my dash lines. I can change my stroke to be 0.5, which I like my stitching to be. And then for my dash lines, I like the dash to be 1.5 and the gap to be one. Um, and so I've got my stitching, I can move this into the correct position and I'm just going to right click arrange and send to the front just making sure that the stitching always stays at the front. So now I've done that what I can do is I can take all this and I can reflect it um, and I can actually add in some um, a placket etc etc but before I do that I'm going to actually give myself some rib in these sections first so that when I reflect it I don't have to do the whole rib process over and over again. So to do this what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a brush, I'm going to make myself a brush, so I'm going to make myself the rib setting before I actually put it into these shapes. So what I'm going to do is get my pen tool, I'm going to make sure that it's the ordinary pen tool, and I'm going to draw a straight line at the moment we've got some stitching. I want to just take the stitching off just to see, show you exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to increase the stroke to about 100 and you're going to get this big block almost. Don't panic. If I select the dash lines, if you don't have dash lines, if you go to the drop down arrow, it should say show more options and it will bring up your dash lines. As soon as I click on my dash lines, you'll see actually the rib um, effect has already started to happen. So I can change my um, stroke if I want to to be a bit, a little bit less. I can change the setting here. So if I want the gap to be a bit bigger, if I wanted to do two and two, you'll see that it also changes the setting of the rib. For this purpose, I'm just going to keep it as 1.5 and do 1.5 here. But again, this is totally your preference. You need to make sure that the PT is after it, so I'm going to put that P back in. 
there. Oh, try again. 1.5. So we've got 1.5 by 1.5. Now I've got my um, my rib technique or my rib effect here. What I need to do now is, if you saw my last um, tutorial about doing ribs and making a brush, I'm going to click on the brushes here. Let's just pull that out. If you don't see brushes already here, you can actually just go to Windows and select Brushes. It's shortcut is F5. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my brush and I'm going to drag it. Oh, I'm going to drag it into the brushes and I'm going to select New Pattern Brush, select OK, and then I'm going to select Approximate Path. I'm going to call this Rib or Ribbing. You don't have to name it if you don't want to, but it's always quite useful to know what it is um, when you're looking at a rather small thumbnail. So you've got colorizations, we're going to change this to tints and shades. This ensures that we can go back later on and change the rib color. If you just leave it as none, it makes it very difficult to change the rib color later on. So I'm going to select OK. As soon as I've done that, you can see I now have my rib in my brush library. So it's great really with this because now I can draw any line or any shape and it will apply that rib texture. Okay, so now I've done that, what I need to do now, I can actually delete this um, rib because I don't need it on the page anymore. I can actually apply this rib to my neck or my collar and my um, cuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy the collar, command C, and I'm going to paste it, command V. And then I'm going to get my pen tool and I'm going to draw a line that goes through the center of the collar. So I've just used this as a to look at the center of that collar. And I'm going to click on my brush. So this is a stroke, and all I need to do to apply this stroke, or this brush, sorry, to this stroke, is just click on that. And straight away, you'll see that it has applied that ribbing to that stroke. Now, if I find that's too thick, I can go back and change it, make it smaller. Um, but I think I'm okay with it being at uh, one, so I'm gonna leave it at that for the moment. I need to extend this line, I can just go to the last point, see where the white box is, I can drag it out a bit so it, it fills that whole shape. So next we're gonna do is we're gonna take that brush and we're gonna send it behind the shape. So first of all, if you click on the shape, you can give it a fill color. So it'll be easier to see when you've sent it to the back, I'm gonna make it white. So straight away I've filled it in with white, it's definitely filled in but it's because it's behind the brush, I can't really see it. So I need to right click, arrange, and bring to the front. So when you're doing, um, applying this rib into the shape, it's really important that the brush is actually behind the shape. Then I'm gonna select the shape and the brush together by using the black arrow tool and dragging over the both of them. And I can see I've selected both of them because I've got my red guide going through the shape and I've also got a line showing or uh, my red guide showing through the brush. Now all I need to do is do command seven. Straight away that will put that rib into that shape and that's called a clipping mask. So let's do that again. Black arrow tool, select around the shape and the brush stroke. Command seven or control seven if you're on a PC. And it's actually added that um, brush into that shape. Now let's just go back to the collar. And if I click on my original collar, I'm going to give it a fill color here. Press OK. And then I'm going to grab my rib and I'm going to place that. Move that. Let's go again. Wait for my arrow to change, grab that over the top and then what I can do is grab my black arrow tool, select both the shape and the rib and group it. So 
I'm going to do Command G. And basically what that means is now I can move this collar about the page without losing both the background and the rib. Okay, so I'm going to put that there for the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the cuff. So if I get my cuff here, Command C, Command V, I've got that shape there. Let's zoom back in. Again, we're going to get our pen tool. We're going to do a line through the center of the cuff. I'm going to click on the brushes to apply that effect to the brush. Again, we need to get our shape, fill that with a color. So I'm filling it with white, bringing it to the front, right click, arrange, bring to the front. Select both the rib and the shape, then press Command 7. Okay, so we can grab our cuff here. We can give that a fill color. If we didn't do this, what would happen is we'd just end up, if we just put this over here, we'd end up with it being transparent. So obviously we need to have a, a color behind here, otherwise we'll end up with a transparent shape. So this is why we actually, um, that's why I actually copy the shape first and then add it behind. So if I put the rib over the top, select both of them and do Command G. So now I've got my cuff grouped with the background white shape. You see, you can't see the photograph underneath and that's the whole purpose of copying the shape first before you do the clipping mask. So now we've got half our garment done, which is fabulous. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill all the shapes that I have at the moment. Should I fill it now? I'll fill it later, actually. So we're going to get our black arrow tool. We're going to select this side of the polo. And we're going to reflect this shape. So we're going to go to our reflect tool. If you go to the tool that's underneath the rubber, you'll see there's a rotate tool. If you click and hold on there, you should get the option to reflect the tool. Let me just close this down a little bit so you can see this. So rotate, hold, get the reflect tool. The shortcut for that is just clicking O. Once we've got that tool, which is a two-way um, triangle with a bended arrow going through the top, you're going to have this, um, the cursor is going to change. What you need to do is hover over the center of the guide where you want to reflect the shape. You're going to hold the Alt key first and then you're going to click on the center of the guide. Then you'll get this reflect tool, so reflect dialog box. You're going to select preview first of all and you can see it's already started to reflect it. And then you're going to press copy. Don't click OK make sure you click copy. So I'm going to click copy and now I have two halves. Okay. So you can see I've managed to reflect my shape. I've got exactly the same on both sides. I'm not worried that this isn't matched on this side. As I said to you before, it's a photograph. We know that it had a fold here, so it's not going to be exactly the same. But what we do know is because we reflected it, we're going to have a symmetrical polo shirt. Okay, so what we need to do next is we need to give ourselves a fill color. So we're going to click with our black arrow tool on the sleeve. We're going to hold the shift key whilst we select the body. And then we're going to hold, keep holding the shift key. We're going to select the other side of the body. Oh, let's go again. Click and hold the shift. Click and hold the shift. Keep on holding the shift as you're clicking. So throughout clicking each part or selecting each part, you are holding the shift key. It's called multi-select. Double click on the fill color and give yourself a white fill. So there's a couple of things we need to check before we do the rest of it. We can see here that our armhole is not correct. So we need to send our sleeve to the back. We can tell because when we look here, it doesn't line up with the side seam. So get your black arrow tool, select the sleeve. If you go right click, arrange, center the back. 
see it's nicely matched now. Again, get your white black arrow tool, see it's still selected, select the sleeve and the rib, right click, arrange, centre the back. Notice I didn't touch the stitching because the stitching we actually made sure was at the front to begin with. So the next thing we're going to do is get our black arrow tool, we're going to select the collar. So if you notice, as I've selected the collar, I haven't touched the body at all. So I'm just selecting over both, making sure I haven't touched the body. I'm going to group this now, so that now I can move it and I can see that I need to join this point here and the point below as well. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit and I'm going to show you. At the moment, if we look at this shape, it's not joined, separate. So we need to join it here. There's two open points. There's one here and there's one here. One so to get that back. So what I'm going to do is get my white arrow tool. I'm going to select those two open points. And you can see here as I zoom in that these points at the top are still white, but the points here are red. When these points are red, it means it's selected. If it's white like this, it means it's not selected. So at the moment, we have one, two points selected out of the whole shape. So what we're going to do is right click, average. And what average does is it finds the midpoint between those two open points. So it's like um, someone being in the UK and someone living in the States and it's meeting, those two people meeting halfway between those countries. That's the best way really I can explain it. So I'm going to go to OK. See how it's now changed to a single point. And what I'm going to do then is get my white arrow tool, go over it again just to be on the safe side that I've selected those. And I'm going to do Command J. Oh. Command J. And I'm going to do Smooth and OK. For quickness you can just do right click and join. So either way works. This is a slightly older illustrator version so if you're using CC if you just right click um, and do um, join or just do command J it does the same thing. So We're not too worried about the shape of this because once we've done the collar, uh, once we put the collar on it will be a nice shape. So again, I'm going to do exactly the same thing at the bottom here. We know these two points are open. We can see that they, they're not joined. So let me just put that back just to show you. Get my white arrow tool, select them both or drag over them both. Again, you can see, as I said before, these points are white and this point is red. So we're going to right click average select both, then right click, join, smooth, and that's that. So we have our join shape, so when we go to colour that in, we should have no issues with the colour. We double click now, we can, um, oh, is that my stitching wrong? Let's get our stitching back. So let's move that slightly, glass stitching, right click, arrange, into the front and we can now move this back into the right place. Perfect. We get our collar and we can put that back in the right place also. To finish this off, we can give ourselves a placket. So I'm just going to get my rectangle shape tool, I'm going to drag outwards. I'm just giving myself a basic placket. So we've got that. I'm going to make sure that our collar is to the front because, as you can see, slightly overlapping here. So I'm going to get my collar, right click, arrange, bring to the front. And so now, if I was to move this up, it kind of gets hidden really nicely. So the next thing I'm going to do is do my back collar, and then I'm going to do the um, buttons at a later stage. 
I'll do the back collar and then show you roughly how to do the um, back view. So we need to um, actually give ourselves this panel here, we need to actually give ourselves that shape. So I would just use the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a square over the top. It's a white square, it looks strange. All you're going to do is right click, arrange, centre the back. Now, so you've given yourself a back panel, it's all been hidden. Then we need to make sure actually that our back neckline is curved. So if we double click on that square now, we enter isolation mode, we can now sh give this line a curved shape. So let's zoom in a bit more. Get your white arrow tool, select this line, just press delete, gets rid of that line. Go back to get your pen tool. Hover over the last point until you see the cursor's change. At the moment you can see it's a cross. If I hover over the top it goes to a minus. And click on there to reconnect the line. Can you see that by the cursor there's now a circle? It means I've filled that shape. I'm going to close that shape. So if I click now, oh, again, click now and drag, I can give myself a curve. Okay, so now I've got a curved neckline which is perfect and now I need to draw in my back neck. So all I'm going to do is get my pen tool, I'm going to draw a straight uh, diagonal line here, across here, making sure I'm not touching the top collar and then I'm going to click and make that slightly curved because remember the front is curved side here. I'm going to go a bit closer because I need to now move some of these points. So I didn't want to get too close to the original, so now I can move them in a more accurate position and know that it's not going to join to that line. So let's move that there. Okay, I can curve this up a bit more, a bit more. And I can make sure this is straight. It's really about being as accurate as possible. So now you can see I've got my back neck there. I'm going to just drag this to one side. And like what I did with the front collar, I'm going to do Command C, Command V. And then I'm going to put it to one side. I'm going to get my pen tool, draw a straight line that goes through that collar, the center preferably, so I'm going to move that down, click on my brushes, again exactly the same process, give this a fill color, it already has one, so I can right click, arrange, bring to the front so that I have the shape, the filled in shape at the front, get my black arrow tool, select both the shape and the rib, command 7 for clipping mask, Get that shape, drag it over the top, select it, select the shape and the rib, and group it. Command G. Now I can actually put that back into the right place. I can right click, average, sorry, arrange, send to the back. So now I have my collar towards the back. So what you would do next is just finish off with adding your stitching. So I'm going to get my pen tool, draw a straight line at the hem. And rather than go to my um, strokes to get my stitching, which I can do, I can just get my um, eyedropper tool, whilst this is still selected, and click on the stitching itself, or the armhole, and it will copy exactly the same stitching. Okay, so this is part one. If you flip to part two, <laughs> you'll see how to create the back view of this without starting from the very beginning. Join me in part two. Thank you.